another LED lamp to take to bits, but this is also an experimental video to do with iPad exposure. I have uh, printed off a grayscale from the internet, and then basically on the screen I've selected this stripe to try and lock the exposure. So we'll see how that goes. I chose that one because it uh, it's the one that actually doesn't wash out too much with the paper. It actually shows the lines. Uh, quite clearly. You will also notice there's less glare because I've repainted this with a matte black, although it's kind of like the shine of the previous paint is coming through. And I've put a diffusion filter, i.e. tracing paper, uh, inside the floodlights to actually lower this, sort of, well to diffuse them, but it has lowered the light output quite dramatically. I'm going to have to get used to this slightly lower light output. But anyway, I digress. So this is the test video and I'll probably do another one with uh, another lamp, but uh, without doing that, we'll see how they compare. So this is a hydroponic lamp, and uh, the pictures online showed lovely nice circles of red and blue LEDs, which it doesn't have. That's very random uh, collection of uh, the LEDs in it. And there are 60 LEDs, and it was supposed to be 20 blue, 40 red, but it's actually 15 blue and 45 red. So uh, let's plug it in. It's quite a smart lamp. It's just like the, it's like the sort of standard GU 10-ish style ones, but scaled up a little bit. So I'll screw it into this adapter so we can plug it into our UK bayonet cap holder. It was also supposed to be 7 watt, I believe. Um, that's not borne out too well on the meter, which says 2.8 watts, 2.7 watts, 2.8, yeah. But we'll check that. We'll actually measure it across the LEDs. You'll see a bit of shimmer and flicker because uh, the iPad just picks the slightest bit of shimmer up. But to show you the arrangement of the LEDs here, I'll just cover it around like that and you'll see, oh, that is quite psychedelic, isn't it? And the intensity, uh, I noticed one of the blue LEDs was flickering on and off already, and uh, the intensity of the reds isn't very even at all. So um, it's not really the pick of the crop, it's just generic LEDs. But, but uh, let's open this up and take a look inside, shall we? So I'll just tuck that out of the way. So I'm just guessing this is a uh, jammed in. It, it's glued. Okay. First surprise. I should really discharge this, shouldn't I? Oh no, I'll just uh, get a surprise when I touch something. Uh, first surprise is it looks as though all the LEDs are in series, working their way in rings. So, um, what's that then? Uh, if, where's the notepad? First test of the notepad under the new illumination and uh, settings. This is still slightly sticky after a day, that's annoying. Um, so, uh, we've got 15 times blue. And I'd say roughly about 3 volts each. He said, drawing a really bad at, equals 45 volts. We'll measure this though, we'll test it. Um, and we've got 45 times red at roundabout, that can vary, that can be 2 to 2.5 volts, but I'll say 2 volts equals 90 volts. So a combined forward voltage of 135 volts. Let's uh, put that to the test, shall we? I'll have to bring that socket back in now. Live it up, uh, exposing lots of live connections, and then stick a meter across and we'll see what happens. I'm guessing 135 volts, but I could be wrong. We'll also do a current test on it. So that's it lit now. I like the way uh, the blue very obviously shines through the green PCB, which it would because it's close to this uh, greenish colour. So uh, let's uh, check the voltage across that without shorting too much out. Uh, 190 volts. Oh no, I'm talking shit. It's 100, actually uh, 134.8. That is so close to the 135 I guessed. So just out of interest, let's measure. That's a, a red LED. Is it 2 volts in the button-ish? 1.965. Uh, and the blue LED is just a bit over. Yeah, it's more or less dead on, 3 volts. 
Oh well, that's uh, consistent. Now let's uh, measure the current going through it by actually just shorting one of the LEDs out and I'll stick this lead into the uh, DC milliamps range. Now cramps, milliamps, and it's currently on DC, so let's short an LED out, just a random LED, so uh, let's short this one out. 20 milliamps almost on the button, so they're just driving these LEDs as they should be. So let's work out the actual power of this then, I shall unplug this now before I zap myself, and I'll put my leads back into the uh, voltage and uh, resistance uh, mode just because, as I say, never leave your meter in the current mode in case you pick it up and just stick it across a live supply. And it makes a bit of a bang and blows that very expensive fuse inside. So, uh, 20 milliamps, 135 volts times 0 0.02 amps. Uh, where's my calculator? What did that uh, measure? It was roughly just about 3 watts, wasn't it? It was showing in my meter. So let's see how accurate this comes out. 135 volts times 0 0.02 equals 2.7. That's pretty much what it displayed. Let's uh, check that. Let's uh, double check that. Two point seven. This thing is so accurate that it really is surprising. Even with some weird loads, it very rarely gets confused by loads. Wish you could find another one like that, but then um, that was just a sort of one-off. I haven't seen that style since. So yes, let's uh, take a closer look at the. Well, let's actually just uh, draw the schematic for this out. We know it's going to pretty much be the capacitive dropper, and it looks like the capacitive dropper that is found in so many of these other LED lamps. I'm going to get a zap here. It's bound to have held a bit of charge. It's wrapped in Kapton tape, which is quite unusual. But then again, it's really just to stop it shorting against these contacts. Uh, I have more Kapton tape, so I'll just actually cut this, I think. Scissors. I was looking for the end there, but you know, I could spend ages looking for the end and not find it. I'm just going to short that capacitor out while I keep my fingers away from everything else. It's dead. That's fine. I'll do the finger test as well. Yeah, it's definitely dead. Okay. So what we got? It's the pretty fairly standard layout here. 470 nano. Okay, let's doodle this out. This won't take too long. So live and neutral come in. Live, we'll just, uh, I mean, it's bayonet cap, so it could go in anyway, goes straight to the capacitor, which is 470 nano. And that's the bit that's limiting the current by just letting a portion of current through in each half of the cycle. It's got a uh, one mega ohm resistor. It's very old school, actually, this. That's the one mega ohm discharge resistor to make sure that when it's unplugged, you don't get a tingle off the back of the pins. Um, to make sure, because this capacitor can hold a charge. Then it's going through the bridge rectifier. The other connection is going straight to the bridge rectifier, neutral. So that's AC, AC plus, minus, and that's a bridge rectifier, abbreviated. The output of the bridge rectifier is kind of predictably going straight to that capacitor. With, again, a discharge resistor across it. Yes. One mega ohm discharge resistor again. One mega ohm. The capacitor is rated. These ones usually have 4.7 meg fired, 400 volt, but I could be wrong. 2.2 meg fired, 400 volt, close-ish, 2.2 meg fired, 400 volt, and it's also got a series resistor, brown, black, black, so that's 10 ohm, um, out to the LEDs from the positive, so that's up there, 10 ohm, which is kind of semi-pointless, 
a lot of the modern lamps just omit that resistor completely. And then just the string of 60 LEDs, which I'm not going to draw 60 LEDs, that would be extremely boring indeed, so you're just going to have to assume that each of those LEDs is uh, 20. So, yeah, 60 LEDs. So, very simple circuit. Um, fairly typical, really. Uh, almost surprised at the lowish value of that capacitor, but then again, they're not really pushing these LEDs hard like some of the modern lights, so... Um, I, I will say I, I quite like the fact that this is just a random pattern. I'm almost tempted to um, use a much fractionally lower, even just actually chop this resistor out and let the leakage go through that... Uh, would that work? Through that resistor just to make it glow because it looks quite attractive. Well, we try that right now. Let's uh, get rid of that uh, capacitor. Let's crop it flush and just rely on the leakage through that one mega ohm uh, resistor, that uh, small amount of current. It might be defeated by this resistor here, but I can always chop that as well. Let's give this a go. I shall plug it in. Will it glow? Sometimes it takes a wee while for it just to run up. Oh, it is, it's starting to glow. But very dimly. Uh, I'll just uh, turn the light off here so you can see that. Oh, you can't actually even see the red LEDs at all. Uh, right, okay, let's uh, unplug that. And I'm going to just crop that resistor there, which is the discharge resistor, and that should just beef it up a little bit more. Is that going to make it any brighter? That's it's starting to show. Oh, that's quite visually nice. Looking at that, it just looks quite subtle. The blue really outshines the, shines the red, though, but that's uh, just how it is. Yeah, it's quite interesting like that. It looks kind of just random arty effect, but yeah. Yes, well, that was quite fun. It was a, a quite a cheap lamp. I think that was about £2 something. Yeah, it was, it was really quite cheap, about five Australian dollars, uh, apparently, according to the note I've got here, which works out about £2.40. Uh, in UK currency. So let's uh, try and work that out. Let's say uh, 2.4 times 1.6. So about $3.80 American currency. So yeah, it, it's quite a nice little, it's nice. I don't think you'd want to grow your marijuana or, or whatever under it. I don't think it'd probably do much, but as a visually interesting light, it's okay. Well, uh, once I'd started, I just couldn't leave that alone, so uh, I ended up putting a 100k resistor in in place of the original capacitor and 1 mega ohm resistor, and um, then I reinstated the 1 mega ohm discharge resistor across the electrolytic so I didn't get dingles while I was playing with it, and that's actually surprisingly bright. That actually projects a beam of light out now, even though it's only drawing about, uh, let's see, let's do the maths, uh, it was about... 0 0.0014 milliamp, uh, 1, 1 1.4 milliamps times 240 RMS equals about point, a, a third of a watt. Uh, just a simple resistive dropper, and now it looks quite visual, it really is quite bright. I'm trying to let it see if it'll focus, yeah, there, so there it goes. Yeah, that's quite neat, I quite enjoyed playing with that actually, it's a, a nice little lamp.